The Intel 80486, also known as the i486 or 486, is a higher performance follow-up to the Intel 80386 microprocessor. The 80486 was introduced in 1989 and was the first tightly pipelined x86 design as well as the first x86 chip to use more than a million transistors, due to a large on-chip cache and an integrated floating-point unit. It represents a fourth generation of binary-compatible CPUs since the original 8086 of 1978. A 50 MHz 80486 executes around 40 million instructions per second on average and is able to reach 50 MIPS peak performance. The I486 does not have the usual 80 prefix because of a court ruling that prohibits trademarking numbers such as 80486. Later, with the introduction of the Pentium brand, Intel began branding its chips with words rather than numbers. Topic: <laughs> Background. The 80486 was announced at Spring Comdex in April 1989. At the announcement, Intel stated that samples would be available in the third quarter of 1989 and production quantities would ship in the fourth quarter of 1989. The first 80486 based PCs were announced in late 1989, but some advised that people wait until 1990 to purchase an 80486 PC because there were early reports of bugs and software incompatibilities. Topic. Improvements The instruction set of the i486 is very similar to its predecessor, the Intel 80386, with the addition of only a few extra instructions, such as CMPXCHG which implements a compare and swap atomic operation and XADD, a fetch and add atomic operation returning the original value unlike a standard ADD which returns flags only. From a performance point of view, the architecture of the i486 is a vast improvement over the 80386. It has an on-chip unified instruction and data cache, an on-chip floating point unit and an enhanced bus interface unit. Due to the tight pipelining, sequences of simple instructions such as ALU REG, REG and ALU REG, IM could sustain a single clock cycle throughput one instruction completed every clock. These improvements yielded a rough doubling in integer ALU performance over the 386 at the same clock rate. A 16 MHZ 80486 therefore had a performance similar to a 33 MHZ 386, and the older design had to reach 50 MHz to be comparable with a 25 MHZ 80486 part. <laughs> Differences between I386 and I486 An 8 KB on-chip SRAM cache stores the most recently used instructions and data 16 KB and or right back on some later models. The 386 had no such internal cache but supported a slower off-chip cache which was not a level 2 cache because there was no internal level 1 cache on the 80386. Tightly coupled pipelining completes a simple instruction like ALU REG, REG or ALU REG, I'm every clock cycle after a latency of several cycles. The 386 needed two clock cycles to do this. Integrated FPU disabled or absent in SX models with a dedicated local bus, together with faster algorithms on more extensive hardware than in the I-387, this performs floating point calculations faster compared to the I-386 plus I-387 combination. Improved MMU performance 
New Instructions, XADD, BSWAP, CMPXCHG, INVD, WBINVD, INVLPG, just as in the 80386, a simple flat 4 GB memory model could be implemented by setting all segment selector registers to a neutral value in protected mode, or setting the same segment registers to zero in real mode, and using only the 32-bit offset registers. X86 terminology for general CPU registers used as address registers as a linear 32-bit virtual address bypassing the segmentation logic. Virtual addresses were then normally mapped onto physical addresses by the paging system except when it was disabled. Real mode had no virtual addresses, just as with the 80386, circumventing memory segmentation could substantially improve performance in some operating systems and applications. On a typical PC motherboard, either four matched 30-pin SIMs or one 72-pin SIM per bank were required to fit the 80486 a 32-bit data bus. The address bus used 30 bits A31, A2 complemented by four byte select pins instead of A0, A1 to allow for any August 16 32-bit selection. This meant that the limit of directly addressable physical memory was 4 gigabytes as well 230 32-bit words equals 232 8-bit words equals topic models equals there are several suffixes and variants see table other variants include Intel RapidCAD, a specially packaged Intel 486DX and a dummy floating point unit FPU designed as pin-compatible replacements for an Intel 80386 processor and 80387 FPU. I-486 SLNM, I-486 SL based on I-486 SX, I-487 SX P23N, I-486 DX with one extra pin sold as an FPU upgrade to I-486 SX systems. When the I-487 SX was installed, it ensured that an I-486 SX was present on the motherboard but disabled it, taking over all of its functions. I-486 Overdrive P23T, P24T, I-486 SX, I-486 SX2, I-486 DX2 or I-486 DX4. Marked as upgrade processors, some models had different pinouts or voltage handling abilities from standard chips of the same speed stepping. Fitted to a coprocessor or overdrive socket on the motherboard worked the same as the i487 sx the specified maximal internal clock frequency on intel's versions ranged from 16 to 100 megahertz the 16 megahertz i486 sx model was used by dell computers one of the few 80486 models specified for a 50 MHz bus 486DX50 initially had overheating problems and was moved to the 0.8 micrometers fabrication process. However, problems continued when the 486DX50 was installed in local bus systems due to the high bus speed, making it rather unpopular with mainstream consumers, as local bus video was considered a requirement at the time, though it remained popular with users of ASA systems. The 486DX50 was soon eclipsed by the clock doubled I486DX2, which instead ran the CPU logic at twice the external bus speed, actually being slower due to the bus running at only 25 or 33 MHz. 
More powerful 80486 iterations such as the Overdrive and DX4 were less popular the latter available as an OEM part only, as they came out after Intel had released the next generation P5 Pentium processor family. Certain steppings of the DX4 also officially supported 50 MHz bus operation, but it was a seldom used feature. Asterisk WT Topic. Right through cash strategy, WB Right back cash strategy other makers of 80486 like CPUs 80486 compatible processors have been produced by other companies such as IBM, Texas Instruments, AMD, Cyrix, UMC, and SGS Thomson. Some were clones identical at the microarchitectural level, others were clean room implementations of the Intel instruction set. IBM's multiple source requirement is one of the reasons behind its x86 manufacturing since the 80286. The 80486 was, however, covered by many of Intel's patents covering new R&D as well as that of the prior 80386. Intel and IBM have broad cross licenses of these patents, and AMD was granted rights to the relevant patents in the 1995 settlement of a lawsuit between the companies. AMD produced several clones of the 80486 using a 40 MHz bus 486DX40, 486DX2 80, and 486DX4 120, which had no equivalent available from Intel as well as a part specified for 90 MHz, using a 30 MHz external clock, that was sold only to OEMs. The fastest running 80486 CPU, the M5 by 86 ran at 133 MHz and was released by AMD in 1995. 150 MHz and 160 MHz parts were planned but never officially released. Cyrix made a variety of 80486 compatible processors, positioned at the cost-sensitive desktop and low-power laptop markets. Unlike AMD's 80486 clones, the Cyrix processors were the result of clean room reverse engineering. Cyrix's early offerings included the 486 DLC and 486 SLC, two hybrid chips which plugged into 386 DX or SX sockets respectively, and offered 1 KB of cache versus 8 KB for the then current Intel, AMD parts. Cyrix also made real 80486 processors, which plugged into the i486 a socket and offered 2 or 8 kilobytes of cache. Clock for clock, the Cyrix made chips were generally slower than their Intel, AMD equivalents, though later products with 8 kilobytes caches were more competitive, if late to market. The Motorola 68040, while not compatible with the 80486, was often positioned as the 80486A equivalent in features and performance. Clock for clock basis the Motorola 68040 could significantly outperform the Intel 80486 chip. However, the 80486 had the ability to be clocked significantly faster without suffering from overheating problems. The Motorola 68040 performance lagged behind the later production 80486 systems. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Motherboards and buses. Early 80486 machines were equipped with several ESA slots using an emulated PC, at bus and sometimes one or two 8-bit only slots compatible with the PC, XT bus. Many motherboards enabled overclocking of these up from the default 6 or 8 MHz to perhaps 16.7 or 20 MHz half the I486 bus clock in a number of steps, often from within the BIOS setup. 
especially older peripheral cards normally worked well at such speeds as they often used standard MSI chips instead of slower at the time custom VLSI designs. This could give significant performance gains such as for old video cards moved from a 386 or 286 computer, for example. However, operation beyond 8 or 10 MHz could sometimes lead to stability problems, at least in systems equipped with SCSI or sound cards. Some motherboards came equipped with a 32-bit bus called ASA that was backward compatible with the ESA standard. ASA offered a number of attractive features such as increased bandwidth, extended addressing, IRQ sharing, and card configuration through software rather than through jumpers, dip switches, etc. However, ASA cards were expensive and therefore mostly employed in servers and workstations. Consumer desktops often used the simpler but faster Visa Local Bus VLB, unfortunately somewhat prone to electrical and timing-based instability. Typical consumer desktops had ESA slots combined with a single VLB slot for a video card. VLB was gradually replaced by PCI during the final years of the 80486 period. Few Pentium class motherboards had VLB support as VLB was based directly on the i486 bus, it was no trivial matter adapting it to the quite different P5 Pentium bus. ESA persisted through the P5 Pentium generation and was not completely displaced by PCI until the Pentium 3 era. Late 80486 boards were normally equipped with both PCI and ESA slots, and sometimes a single VLB slot as well. In this configuration VLB or PCI throughput suffered depending on how buses were bridged. Initially, the VLB slot in these systems was usually fully compatible only with video cards quite fitting as Visa. Stands for Video Electronic Standards Association, VLB-ID, Multi-IO, or SCSI cards could have problems on motherboards with PCI slots. The VL bus operated at the same clock speed as the I-486 bus basically being a local 80486 bus while the PCI bus also usually depended on the I-486 clock but sometimes had a divider setting available via the BIOS. This could be set to 1 over 1 or 1 half, sometimes even 2 thirds for 50 MHz CPU clocks. Some motherboards limited the PCI clock to the specified maximum of 33 MHz and certain network cards depended on this frequency for correct bit rates. The ESA clock was typically generated by a divider of the CPU, VLB, PCI clock as implied above. One of the earliest complete systems to use the 80486 chip was the Apricot VXFT, produced by United Kingdom hardware manufacturer Apricot Computers. Even overseas in the United States it was popularized as the world's first 80486. In the September 1989 issue of Byte magazine shown right, Later 80486 boards also supported Plug and Play, a specification designed by Microsoft that began as a part of Windows 95 to make component installation easier for consumers. <laughs> Gaming The 486DX2 66 MHz processor was popular on home-oriented PCs during the early to mid-1990s, toward the end of the MS-DOS gaming era. It was often coupled with a Visa Local Bus video card. The introduction of 3D computer graphics spelled the end of the 80486 arraign, because 3D graphics make heavy use of floating point calculations and require a faster CPU cache and more memory bandwidth. Developers began to target the P5 Pentium processor family almost exclusively with x86 assembly language optimizations, e.g., Quake, which led to the usage of terms like 
Pentium compatible processor for software requirements. Many of these games required the speed of the P5 Pentium processor family's double pipelined architecture. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Obsolescence. The AMD M5 by 86 up to 133 MHz and Cyrix CX5 by 86 up to 120 MHz were the last 80486 processors that were often used in late generation 80486 motherboards with PCI slots and 72 pin SIMs that are designed to be able to run Windows 95 and also often used as upgrades for older 80486 86 motherboards. While the Cyrix CX5 by 86 faded quite quickly when the Cyrix 6 by 86 took over, the AMD M5 by 86 was important during the time when the AMD K5 was delayed. In the general purpose desktop computer role, 80,486 based machines remained in use into the early 2000s, especially as Windows 95, Windows 98, and Windows NT 4.0 were the latest Microsoft operating systems to officially support installation on an 80,486 based system. However, as Windows 95 98s and Windows NT 4.0 were eventually overtaken by newer operating systems, 80,486 systems likewise fell out of use. Still, a number of 80,486 machines have remained in use today, mostly for backward compatibility with older programs most notably games, especially since many of them have problems running on newer operating systems. However, DOSBox is also available for current operating systems and provides emulation of the 80486 instruction set, as well as full compatibility with most DOS-based programs. Although the 80486 was eventually overtaken by the Pentium for personal computer applications, Intel had continued production for use in embedded systems. In May 2006 Intel announced that production of the 80486 would stop at the end of September 2007. Topic. See also List of Intel microprocessors Motorola 68040, although not compatible, was often positioned as the Motorola equivalent to the Intel 80486 in terms of performance and features. <laughs> Notes